Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Molly O'Brien. I'd like to welcome artist and designer Laura Burkett. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So you're also the Executive Director of Art Smart Productions, which is very exciting. Uh, so the Rhode Island School of Design had an annual art sale right around this time of year, and it was successful, long-standing, around 20 years or so. So they canceled it, and you decided well, we need to have an art show, right? So the you, show must go on. The show must go on. So you are directing the Art Providence Holiday Show at the Rhode Island Convention Center. It runs December 9th through 10th. There's also a VIP night on the 8th. So tell me a little bit about how you decided to put on the Art Holiday, Art Providence Holiday Show, uh, and how you decided to put together over 200 <laughs> artists and artisans. You gathered all these people, and you're, you're putting together the show, and it's jury, jury nonetheless. Okay, so I, in about March, I heard that the show, the, the Rizzi Holiday Sale had been canceled. I heard this through a, a jeweler friend, another artisan, and she told me how frustrated all of the Rizzi alumni artists were that the sale was no longer happening because, as you mentioned, it was so successful for so many years. And this friend looked at me and she said, everybody's upset and they really want the show to still go on, but nobody has time to do it. You should just do it. And I said, yeah, I should just do it. So. Because I have a, a background in business and brand management, and then combined with also doing my own line of leather bags and participating in these jury shows, I thought I have the necessary pieces, um, and I have also a good network of resources around me, a lean and mean team. So I decided, yeah, we should try to do this. Let's go and meet with RISD and have a chat with them and understand their reasons for canceling the show and, and whether we could provide some sort of solution. And, it was just a fantastic um, conversation with them and a very gracious transition to us actually doing the show. But we maintained a lot of a lot of the components that we have now in the show, as you mentioned. So the timing of the show, the location, and a lot of the same artists. So the two main changes that we made to the show were to open it up to other artists as well, operating in the, or working in the 15 categories. And the other change was um, making it two days rather than just one day. Because sometimes people would forget about the show on Saturday, <laughs> myself included, and it would be Sunday, and you'd be so bummed that you missed the show. So that has been very, very well received. And we got jurors involved because we knew we wanted to keep the level of work very high. We wanted to emulate um, high-end jury craft shows along the lines of American Craft Council and, and Craft Boston, shows like that. So we got jurors involved, and, um, and we got a lot of fantastic applications. It was a very competitive submission. and. We ended up with 200 artists that are that are showing, so we're very excited. <laughs> I mean, this is this is going to be so big, and I'm so excited. You've brought in some of the works to show us, just to give us a little peek, and to get people excited. Um, talk to me about why you think it's important, especially around this time of year, to provide not only an opportunity for artists to show their work, artisans to show their work. Um, but to continue something that's been around forever and to open it up to people that aren't just RISD alone. Um, well, I think we at Art Smart Productions are big fans of diversity, and we know that, well, we, we know that art is important in general, but we feel like there are a lot of talented artists in the New England area and beyond, and we just we want to be able to in, you know, open it up and include it to, to all of those artists. Yeah, and I think what's neat about this as well is that you're giving an opportunity for people to, you know, shop locally pretty much, whether it's for themselves or for their others. And what I think is so neat too about our community is that, um, you know, you are not just some person who's taking over this art show. You're not, you know, just a big marketing person looking for a buck. <laughs> You're an artist sure. as well. So I think that's really neat to be part of an art community. And I think just that's so neat is that artists supporting artists. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love Providence. So, uh, and, and, and while I love Rhode Island. <laughs> well, and just to add to the point of shopping local, the nice thing about this, yes, you're shopping local, but you're going to one location where you are seeing yeah. 200 artists from greater New England and beyond. I mean, we have an artist coming from Oregon, we have Pennsylvania, we have New Mexico, cool. and you're meeting the artist. So you're shopping local. I mean, yes, most of the artists are from New England, but you are getting a, a broad you know, diversity, geographic diversity as well. So. Which I think is neat. So let's talk about that. So you brought a couple of pieces to show us, but also talk to me about some of the people who are going to be there. So again, 200 artists and artisans, uh, roughly half are RISD alums and half are from here, but also 
from elsewhere, which you just mentioned. So talk to me a little bit about what people can see in some of the categories, and then we're going to show you some um, some of the things I'm reaching down to show you these little works. Okay, so the categories, we have uh, 15 categories represented, and everything from wearable fiber, jewelry, a lot of fabulous jewelry, ceramics, as you can see, painting, drawing, um, printmaking, it's a very long list. I was going to say everything. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. And so it spans, it spans art, craft, and design. And when I say design, I mean, you know, producing in small batches and scan locally. So um, this is an artist who, uh, this is Judy Goudreau. She's based in Pawtucket. And she beautiful. has an amazing ability to convey the emotion of, yeah. of these cute animals. These in, are beautiful. In these, um, yeah, they really are. And yeah, and she's She's fantastic. She's a wonderful neighbor as well in our in our mill and Oh, so, those are yeah. These are um, beautiful. They're not even. I mean, they're like they're so real. They are. This actually looks kind of like my dog. They look like they're still in motion, and that's yeah. why we were we were so amazed by by this art artistry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it is. Okay, why don't you show me? You have some some. Um, are those paintings? So this is... Um, I don't even know what to call that. This, That's so well, cool. Okay, so this is... is wax? This, this, the process is encaustic, and the artist is telling Vitaly, and tell me if you're watching, forgive me if I don't explain the process correctly. So this is layers and layers of melted wax, and yes. obviously pigment and, and different, you know, etching and scratching. Oh. It is, it's beautiful. So can I so you, you can, but, you know, it's delicate. So... <laughs> Okay. That's all I so, <laughs> so this this work, I, I particularly like what Talene has done with her with her range of offerings because some of her fine art pieces, paintings, and pieces like this, you know, they have a higher price tag. So this might be of interest to an art collector um, or someone in a gallery, for example. But she also does prints of her work, which let me grab one of these. So a slightly more accessible price point. Oh, some Beautiful. of them are already framed. She sells some that are not framed. So that's it's just a wonderful way to, to be able to you know have diversity within wow. your line of work and even a third she's done. and where is she based on she's <laughs> in Wisconsin in Pawtucket yeah we love Pawtucket artists so this is also Telene and she these are original works of art wow. so these are she's actually painted each one of these and are they so like cards they're cards like, so they're um, like note cards so it's you know you can oh. have a piece of the dream <laughs> what a great idea. Yeah. So I love that. Oh, those are beautiful. So wonderful for a holiday gift as well. So yeah, we're we're very excited. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. So let's show a little bit before we wrap up here. Let's show what you do because, like I said, not only do you have this production company, but you're also an artist and a designer yourself. So let's show one of your to pieces. Have to, have to, we have to drag, drag you out of your chair here. Yeah, um, so that. you have a product line. Um, bags, you also have accessories like wallets and that kind of thing. And I think these are, I, I'm actually really excited to see these in person. So Italian aspi aspired, inspired, sorry, <laughs> but um, made in America, which I think is, is really neat. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you got into these. Um, I had the fantastic opportunity of living in Italy for three years between 2003 and 2005. I actually went to Italy to enroll in an Italian language program because I wanted to learn Italian and start a company producing um, producing leather bags, business accessories, if you will. So one thing led to another, and while I was in Italy, I met someone who owned study abroad programs for you know study abroad programs for American college students, and I ended up working for that company for a little while. I had a full time job, so that's what allowed me to live there for three years. Oh, but, nice. but while I was living there, I was parallel pathing the development of, of some of these pieces and. The longer you stay in Italy, the more passionate you become about Italy and leather and I'm design. Hold this up here, and uh, yeah, so this is this is one of the recent additions, and um, yeah, so so I brought this um, I brought this company back. I mean, when I moved back in late two thousand eight, um, I still wanted to keep this going, and I thought it was important to be a part of, you know, bringing some of the manufacturing and well, or making back to the US so I said let's let's figure out a way to do this here. So obviously all of my design influence and inspiration came from Italy and I love that part of it and I want to maintain that. Uh, but I, I said hey let's let's make them locally, especially in in the Blackstone River Valley area, which is the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution in textiles. So that's <sighs> a really interesting component. And then just the detail about this that we're excited about is we're starting to put some 
Um, Sunbrella inside as a lining because it's stained and water resistant, that. typically used for upholstery and um, marine grade applications, awnings, things like that. So this is this is one of the items that I'll have at the show. So <laughs> one of the artists. Love that. Love that to be able to do that. So the show runs from I don't know, I like your ring too. <laughs> Well, she's, not, she's not in the show this year. She's not in the show this year. Maybe next year. So the show runs December 9th through 10th, uh, and it's actually quite affordable. It's $8 for um, one day and $10 for the weekend. Right. So why not go for both? Why not? Absolutely. So, Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. I hope it goes well for you. And we'll do it again next year, right? We will. <laughs> it's a, a tradition, a long-standing tradition. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We're wrapping up here on the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center for my show. Josh Fenton takes over as soon as we clean up. <laughs> so hang tight with us as we get ready for Business Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Molly O'Brien, and we'll see you soon. Molly O'Brien, and we'll see you soon. Molly O'Brien, and we'll see you soon. Molly O'Brien.